Hello everyone, I'm Norm Robolad, founder of Digestive Health Institute and creator of the Fast Track Diet. Today's topic is headaches and the brain-gut connection. There's a common link between gut health and headaches. Since most common gut issues can be fixed by diet and other holistic means, headaches and migraines can also be addressed using the same approach due to this brain-gut connection. So how do we do that? I'll talk about six specific and science-based action steps at the end of this video. So let's get started. There are several different types of headaches and I've put them into some buckets here. First one is migraine headaches. The symptoms of migraines are often pain behind the eye or on one side of the head, neck or shoulder or muscle pain, sensitivity to light or sound, even nausea or vomiting. These symptoms can be moderate or severe enough to send you to the ER and these headaches can last for days. Number two, cluster headaches. These are much less common, thankfully. Like migraines, they're often on one side of the head, but it's a stabbing pain that comes on suddenly and luckily generally does not last more than a couple of hours. Sinus congestion headaches, as the name implies, these headaches are due to pressure from sinus congestion. And anything you can do to relieve that pressure is, is a good thing. The fourth type are headaches due to excess histamine. In other words, headaches is a symptom of histamine intolerance. And number five, tension headaches due to physical, mental, or emotional stress. And number six are more serious headaches from injuries or medical conditions such as central nervous system tumors. And while they need a lot of immediate attention, or very serious conditions, they're less likely to be related to GI issues and they won't be covered here. So how are headaches connected to gut issues? Here's a Venn diagram to help us visualize these connections. According to two recent reviews, Headaches in general are linked to a wide variety of gastrointestinal disorders, including IBS, constipation, GERD, chronic fatigue syndrome, inflammatory bowel disease, celiac disease, and more. And some studies show that resolving GI issues improves or in some cases cures headaches. And you might ask why? Why would that happen? Well, what happens in the gut affects the brain. We know that changes in our gut microbe populations can impact brain function. Microbes produce a whole variety of neuroactive active chemicals such as serotonin, dopamine, cytokines, lipopolysaccharide, and histamine. And these can reach the brain via the vagus nerve or through leaky gut and crossing the blood-brain barrier. And they can alter brain function. Also, dysbiosis, unbalanced growth of microflora in our gut is linked to headaches. A 2020 study in women with migraines showed that migraine sufferers had lower diversity, fewer gut healthy bacteria, including things like Faecali bacterium, Prausnitzii, and other keystone strains. And they had increases in less healthy species of certain Clostridia, along with metabolomic changes, and these are chemicals uh, produced by gut microbes. The healthy controls, on the other hand, had more beneficial microorganisms, such as higher levels of Faecalibacterium prausnitzii, certain species of bifidobacteria, and other organisms. And histamine levels are also linked to headaches and to changes in gut microbe populations. Well, what is histamine? Histamine is a substance produced by mast cells in our body. It's present in the diet and it's also produced by gut bacteria in large amounts. It has many positive regulatory roles, but it also causes contraction of muscle cells and dilation of capillaries, which may play a role in headaches. When we have too much histamine in our bodies, bodies that's inflammatory, and it can cause allergic reactions, flushing, bloating, abdominal pain, altered bowel habits, and headaches. High histamine is linked to headaches. To help our body deal with excess histamine, it produces an enzyme called diamine oxidase, or DAO, which breaks down histamine. If deficient in this enzyme, we end up with more histamine in our bodies. There's a definitive link between migraines and low levels of DAO enzyme. 
2018 study showed that 87% of people with migraines had a DAO deficiency compared to only 44% in the control group. And a follow-up study showed that DAO supplementation, taking that enzyme, reduced headache duration in migraine patients that had the DAO deficiency, again supporting this connection between histamine and headaches. In a 2018 study, histamine intolerance patients had reduced diversity of their gut microbe population. They had elevated levels of stool zonulin, a marker of leaky gut, and they had increased levels of inflammatory proteobacteria. In other words, they had signs of dysbiosis and intestinal barrier dysfunction compared to healthy controls. According to a 2022 Italian study, histamine intolerance patients exhibited dysbiosis and significantly more histamine secreting bacteria in their gut, including strains of Staphylococcus, Proteus, and other species. These findings point to a possible source of high histamine in histamine intolerance patients, and that is members of our own gut microbiota churning out too much histamine. In summary, histamine intolerance patients are prone to dysbiosis. They're prone to leaky gut, and they're prone to having more histamine-producing bacteria in the gut. To put it all together, gut dysbiosis is the key. It's common in patients with GI disorders, common in history, histamine intolerance patients, and patients that have headaches, including migraines. Now, how can we leverage these connections? Since diet is the most powerful and healthiest way to address functional GI disorders, as well as histamine intolerance, it makes rational sense that diet changes can improve or resolve headaches. But you might ask, is there evidence that diet changes can resolve headaches? Well, yes, there is. And the evidence focuses on two types of diet, ketogenic diets and diets that limit fermentable carbohydrates, like the fast track diet which quantitatively limits the full spectrum of fermentable carbohydrates. First, let's talk about the rationale for ketogenic diets. There's growing evidence for the use of keto diets in neurological disorders, including epilepsy, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's disease, and multiple sclerosis. But what about headaches? The effectiveness of the ketogenic diet for headaches has been demonstrated by an Italian group of researchers over the last decade. They published three different studies on this. The first one I call the Twin Sisters study. It was published in 2013. It involved a pair of twin sisters with high frequency migraines, five or six headaches per month, but each one lasting up to 72 hours. They essentially had headaches for half the days of the month. They were placed on either on a ketogenic diet for one month, periods, followed by a low calorie non-ketogenic diet for two months and then they repeated the cycle between keto and then low calorie non-keto. During the ketogenic diet periods the headaches were resolved and that really I think got their interest to do more studies on this. In 2018 they published a study on using the ketogenic diet in chronic cluster headache patients. 18 of these cluster headache patients went on a ketogenic diet for 12 weeks. 11 had full resolution of the monthly number of headaches and four other patients also responded positively. And the mean number of headaches were reduced from 109 in the study all the way down to 31 by the end of three months. So they went on to publish a third study. This was, they used a low calorie ketogenic diet versus a low calorie non-ketogenic diet. This was published in 2019 and it involves 35 overweight migraine patients. They alternated between very low calorie keto, very low calorie non-keto in one month cycles. On a very low calorie ketogenic diet, patients had almost four fewer migraine days versus low calorie non-ketogenic. And 74% of the patients on the low calorie ketogenic diets had less than half the number of migraine days compared to only 9% achieving that same uh, level of reduction on the very low calorie non-ketogenic diet. So why are ketogenic diets effective? Theories include the idea that ketones may correct impaired dopamine stimulation, ketones might mediate changes in neurotransmitter activity, etc. Cetera, et cetera. 
but ketogenic diets decrease dopamine and serotonin, which are neurotransmitters and biogenic amines, and histamine is also a biogenic amine and a neuroimmune modulator. Then, will keto also reduce overall histamine levels? It's a good question. Since the ketogenic diet is low in carbohydrates and carbs are the major fuel of microbes in our gut, you might expect keto to reduce histamine being produced in the gut. But what about overall histamine levels? The ketogenic diet often includes some high histamine foods such as spinach, other high histamine vegetables, fermented or canned foods, potentially less fresh meat and fish, etc. So in the case of histamine intolerance, you would want to use a low histamine based ketogenic diet with only fresh meat and fish, limiting fermentable foods and other high histamine foods. Now, how about diets that limit fermentable carbohydrates? Diets that limit fermentable carbs are excellent at addressing gut dysbiosis, which is the common denominator, recall, for headaches, including migraines, GI disorders, and histamine intolerance. But not only that, they also reduce histamine levels. According to a 2017 study, limiting fermentable carbohydrates in the diet resulted in an 800% decrease in histamine levels. And this isn't that surprising since many strains of gut bacteria make histamine. It's similar to what happens in your refrigerator with a three-day-old piece of fish. Bacteria on the surface produce histamine from the amino acid histidine, which is present in all proteins. Reducing fermentable carbohydrates places these microbes in our gut on a diet. And by the way, I use a low histamine version of the Fast Track diet in my consulting practice for this uh, very reason. So based on everything we covered, here are six things you can do to address headaches. Number one, do your best to address your GI issues and ensure adequate hydration, sleep, exercise, meditate, practice relaxation and stress reduction. Number two, try the fast track diet or a ketogenic diet while also limiting high histamine foods. Number three, Try a DAO enzyme supplement to further reduce your histamine levels. Four, try digestive enzymes or other supplements, depending on what's wrong in your case, aimed at improving digestion, thus reducing carbohydrate malabsorption because less excessive fermentation by bacteria in your gut of those carbs equals lower histamine levels. By the way, you can test yourself. You can be tested for histamine and DAO levels. And number six, just for those sinus headaches, do your best to keep your sinuses clear. You might try pseudoephedrine or allergy medicines and so forth. Um, I myself have had terrible migraines in the past. They used to last two to three days and they were quite debilitating. But taking the steps above, I've fully resolved them. So um, I hope this video helps. Thanks for watching. If you like the video, please share and subscribe and I'll see you next time.